85% of Americans are not satisfied with their jobs. Can you imagine that? You dedicate 70% of your day to this one thing called work and you don't enjoy what you're doing. What if there was a way to work a job that was made just for you? What's good guys, my name is Sash and I've had the chance to work at my favorite company, Nike, on the corporate sales side. Today, we're tackling a question that I had not too long ago. What job is right for me? And finding the answer might just be easier than you think. And the way I did it was through personality tests. Not one, but many. Now there's a lot of personality tests out there, but there is one that is specifically tailored to personality and career alignment. At the end of this video, I'm gonna take you through the exact tool that helped me land Nike. But first, let's understand the relationship between personality and career. Certain personality characteristics are more aligned to specific job roles and environments compared to others, leading to high job satisfaction, better performance, and overall better fulfillment. Our work should reflect our values, interests, and our strengths. For instance, someone with a high degree of extroversion might thrive in a role with teaching or being in a sales environment where you're forced to work with people and you have to collaborate and you have to bring in teamwork. Working in a role that is opposed to your personality rather than aligned might lead to higher levels of stress and unfulfillment. But I'm gonna speak on that exact topic at the end of this video. All of this starts by understanding ourselves better. Now, when we're talking about the best personality tests out there, a lot of people really gravitate towards the MBTI, which is the Myers-Briggs type indicator. That being said, it's absolutely crucial to acknowledge that the best personality test really varies. It really depends on the specific insights that one person is seeking and how they're gonna apply those insights to career planning. For the purpose of this exercise, let's talk about the Myers-Briggs test as well as the big five. Now the Myers-Briggs test categorizes people into 16 personality types. These types are then determined by preferences in four categories. Introversion versus extroversion, sensing versus intuition, thinking versus feeling, and judgment versus perceiving. Now the MBTI helps people understand their work preferences, their style of communication, their strengths and weaknesses. For example, an INTJ might be better suited for a role that requires strategic planning and organization. And examples of this are software development or engineering. Now on the other side, we might have someone like an ESFJ, and they might be better suited for caring for others or working in a team of some sorts. I highly recommend you check the link below, take the test and figure out what you are. Now onto the big five. The big five is grounded in decades of psychological research, and it basically distills that humans can be categorized in five different dimensions. Openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And if you want to remember that, just think of the acronym OCEAN. And what it does is that it offers a percentile score relative to the general population. So with this approach, you start to learn that people are really on a spectrum. It's not necessarily black or white. For example, I wouldn't consider myself an introvert or an extrovert. I would consider myself an ambivert, right? I do possess traits of both sides of the spectrum. And even though I am leaning towards the side of introverts, I do find myself in situations where, you know, I love being the center of attention. I love speaking. I love talking. So recognize that people are on, you know, a spectrum when it comes to personality. So what is the application of the big five when it comes to career planning? So for example, creative and open individuals thrive in innovative roles. Conscientious people thrive in roles where there's structure and there's order and it's a super detail oriented environment. Extroverts thrive in interactive team-based environments. Agreeable people would thrive in roles where there's empathy and cooperation. And even understanding neuroticism can give you an idea of stability and support and whether you prefer security or if you don't. And when you understand these big five traits, it really just allows you to align your natural tendencies with the job that you might love doing. So now that we've talked about the big five and the Myers-Briggs test, I do wanna talk about the one tool that has helped me and I think is really gonna help you as well. This isn't a sponsored post, but I do believe Career Fitter is the most practical tool that you can use to align your personality with a career that you love. It's a test that I did about almost three years ago. The things that I unveiled about myself and the personality traits and just insights I was able to you know, take away from the test really helped me design the life that I've wanted and the career that I've wanted as well. So Career Fitter specifically focuses on the intersection of personality and career. So I do recommend taking the premium version of the test just because it unlocks a whole bunch of insights. They do offer a free version as well 
and the free version absolutely will give you a, a good foundation of understanding your personality but i do recommend spend those extra dollars i paid around 20 bucks i believe that was the price of the test when i took it about a couple years ago but please do yourself a favor if it comes to understanding yourself on a deeper level take this test spend the extra money so what you're seeing over here is the dashboard for career fitter i'm going to go through this at just a very high level uh, what you're seeing over here is the aptitude test once you finish the free version of the test and you actually pay for the premium version you're going to be taken to this page where you can complete this aptitude assessment where career fitter is going to assess your work environment and your work preferences once you complete this test you can go down over here and what I have over here is my work personality fingerprint, right? And if we just hover over this box right here, we're going to see that it's just an artistic depiction of my work personality characteristics. And these longer branches over here just represent stronger characteristics, while these shorter branches represent weaker characteristics. So if I'm looking at this right now, idealistic and theoretical, right? It's a long branch over here. Structured and decisive, another long branch. Objective and analytical introspective and reserved right these are pretty long branches right representing strong characteristics in my career now on the other side we have factual and realistic you know that's quite short right outgoing and social quite short flexible and spontaneous quite short right now if you ask if i agree with every single thing over here i might not but i think it does have a relatively good depiction of who i am as a person and if you actually look to your right over here it's going to give you a detailed explanation of each of these different categories so let's start off with uh, structured and decisive i like to plan i like to be organized that's just the type of person that i am reserved and introspective i do love a quieter work environment i like spending time in solitude and self-reflection as well like that is absolutely accurate for me that being said i said this before i think i'm on you know, a spectrum where I'm leaning towards the introverted side, right? I do love partying. I love, you know, having a great time. I love learning about people. And I think that specifically is the reason why I'm in sales. Even though I love to be, you know, introspective at times and, and, and reserved as well. I do play on both sides, both sides of introversion and extroversion. Idealistic and, and theoretical. I love exploring the unknown. That is just something that I think anyone can say about me if, if they know Sash really well. Scrolling down to my work personality details. So Sash is a developer so sash is a developer and just a quick description of who i am my quest is for competency my style is a visionary and my strength is strategic system design let me just speak about this very quickly my quest is competency i love seeking knowledge i love novel perspectives i love learning something that i haven't been exposed to before if you're competent in, in different areas of your life you get to walk into different rooms and different opportunities are going to present themselves so on my quest for competency that is 1000 percent correct so my style is visionary and i think over here is i love to think about the future right it's a blessing and a curse because you know sometimes i gotta learn to love the present and take in the present and i think that is when i talk about the blessing and the curse out of this the curse is you know i struggle to be grateful or practice gratitude for what i currently have right now right and that is something that i'm just working on as a person but i think for the future, I'm always thinking about what next, what next, like what else can I be doing for the future, right? So being a visionary, thinking big, dreaming big, and then obviously taking the necessary steps and action to make that a reality is 1000% me. And then my strength is strategic system design. You know, if I wasn't in sales, I'm starting to understand that I would love to be in a position that involves strategy right creating systems being organized seeing the future understanding data and verbalizing that data to tell a story you know that's the type of person that i am right so it's funny how visionary and strategic system design i think are just side by side together i think uh one complements the other and i think this is very very accurate right so that's a strength that i definitely want to continue to build on scrolling down to my personality chart now you can obviously see the previous visual just in a graph form i think this is very good i'm a visual learner by nature so it's helpful to see this and just a quick summary of you know who you are right calm confident analytical love those words i'm not going to go through everything over here but the whole point of this exercise is to you know understand your quirks your traits your strengths your weaknesses you know i just get a better feeling for who you are as a person right so just off the top over here 
You excel at conceptualizing, designing, and implementing visionary projects, right? Your strengths lie in your deep thinking and forward-looking ideas. I love to go deep in thought when it comes to a new initiative I just brought to life or any efficient ways to make certain processes you know, better. I love to go deep into that. Clear vision, attention to detail, and thoughtful planning. Love that as well. I think that is extremely accurate. This last point over here, you're independent, original, logical, non-conforming, rational. I mean, I love these words. I really do want to emphasize independent just because I think I'm, I'm getting to a stage in life where I'm really starting to value my independence as well. And independence in every way, independent in thought, independent in expression, and independent in just the way I move as well throughout life. So I think this is just a quick, great summary over here. Once you scroll down over here, you're going to notice these boxes, about 12 different boxes, right? Primary characteristics, you at work, potential weaknesses, strengths, top business points, communication style, business environment, team building approach, management style, occupational factors, famous people just like you, and a list of careers based on your personality traits. I think this is absolutely awesome. We'll dive into a few just for you to get a feel for this. So idealistic and theoretical, future oriented, driven by learning, highly imaginative. I grew up as a kid that had a huge imagination, huge imagination. And, you know, working for a company like Nike, you're constantly told to dream big, right? And to have a huge imagination. So I absolutely love this. Uh, this is 1000% me. Scrolling down to objective and analytical, love to see both sides in arguments, right? I'm starting to recognize that as I'm getting older, there isn't just one way to get to a solution or one way to skin a cat. When I see both sides in an argument, I love disagreement and just debating overall. Because when that happens, I'm going to be exposed to a new perspective that I might have not thought before. Structured and decisive, love to be organized, love to be systematic. I dislike surprises. That is absolutely true. Sasha at work. So even look at the detail on this, right? Like it even predicts how you are going to be at work. And I think there's a few points over here that really hit the spot. At work, you can succeed in nearly any occupation you choose as long as it doesn't involve too much monotonous routine, right? I'm the type of person where my brain needs to be stimulated. I have to be learning. I have to be doing something new and I have to control that. I have to learn how to channel that energy towards other ventures as well because I learned that when it comes to the process of mastery, right? You have to master the fundamentals. You have to do the boring shit over and over and over again to be a master at your craft. I'm trying to train my brain to do. Second point over here just segues greatly. Any opportunity to learn is an opportunity that I love to grab at any second. The right fitting job again is one of independence, right? A couple of these words mentioned before. Sash's weaknesses. So if you're ever wondering where you're lacking, right? This is the sort of test that might help you see another frontier that you might have not been exposed to before. So let's talk about weaknesses. I love this one. Sometimes you can be too complex for others to understand. I love that. And I'm thinking about certain scenarios where I have the same conversation with different sets of people or different groups of people. And then some people can relate and some people react in a way that leads to an engaging conversation and some people don't. And that was when I learned, like, you cannot have the same conversation with every single person. You have to segment the relationships that you have in life, right? So for example, when it comes to talking about your goals, we're talking about the future. Not every single person is going to relate to what you want to be doing, or not everyone is going to lift you up or give you the applause that you're looking for or the validation that you're looking for when it comes to, let's say, starting a new venture, right? So you got to pick these people out very carefully and you have to know which conversation to have with who. Your rich imagination can leave you counterproductive. Absolutely true. I've been in situations where I'm constantly thinking. I'm constantly thinking about the future. And there are times when I'm not necessarily implementing that action that's needed to, to get me to that point, right? So instead of dreaming, you gotta turn that dream into a goal and that goal into daily steps that you can take action on in order to bring that dream to life. Some of my strengths, autonomous. I absolutely love having the independence and the freedom to make my own decisions. Even my manager at Nike, like I've been blessed to, to have some really good people at Nike that have allowed me to almost be an entrepreneur within my own job. Autonomy is absolutely everything. 
right? So that is something that I value. Strong initiative as well. If there's a better way to make a process better or be more efficient, I'm gonna be coming to the table with a new initiative to make sure that we're executing on this in a better way, right? If it's saving time, if it's making more money, I'm gonna make sure to, to introduce that initiative into our world. And unique, I love this word, right? Be original, right? There's so many people today that I think just follow what other people do. And I think that's very prominent in, in today's society. But if you wanna pave your own path and create your own story, you have to be unique. You have to do what the masses are not doing. So love this word, business points. So able to inspire and conceptualize ideas. The funny thing about this point is that when I'm drinking with my friends, I'm having a great time. What I do when I'm drunk is I automatically default to motivation and motivating someone and making someone else feel that they gotta get their life together and things like that. That's always been something that has been a pattern whenever I party and it's it's kind of weird, but I love this, right? Like the, the ability to inspire, I think, is one of the most gratifying feelings for me. And it's funny that that is my default setting when I get drunk, but this is absolutely true. Getting projects in motion, like I said before, if there's a better way of doing things, I wanna make it happen. Communication style, communicates with a definite agenda. Don't waste my time. That's it, like that. that's the way I see it, right? Communicate with a purpose, communicate to get shit done. I gather information by seeing, like I mentioned, I'm a visual learner. I learn by, by seeing, I learn by doing. Business environment, efficient methods and systems. I think now we're just, we're looking for synonyms for, you know, autonomy, for independence over here. Like being challenged intellectually. A lot of repeats over here. Team building approach, brings fresh approaches and, and new ideas comes back to that initiative point, keeps the big picture in mind, right? So even though there might be a new process or a new way or, or a better way of doing things, I need to have the overall goal in my mind and under that umbrella, I get to have systems or different processes under that to be better or to achieve that goal quicker. Management style, look at the detail, man. Like this is, this is absolutely unbelievable. In my professional career, I haven't been, you know, at the management level yet. It is one of my goals. I love this first point over here, devises theories and a workable blueprint for achievement, right? I think it goes back to that, that motivation point over here. I want to see other people win, right? And if I can create a blueprint of some sort or a map to get some person from point A to point B, I'm going to do exactly that. And if we scroll all the way down here, you actually get to see people that share your same personality traits. This is absolutely crazy. Famous people like Sash. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go straight to billionaires. Elon Musk, huge, huge idol of mine. We got Zuck over here as well. Larry Page, co-founder of Google. Absolutely huge personalities. Isaac Newton, it's fucking interesting. Nikola Tesla, this is crazy, man. Yeah, you actually get to see people similar to you. Unbelievable. And then lastly over here, so this is your career list. So based on your personality traits, Career Fitter actually builds out, you know, the best fitting careers for you and they sorted out by salary so i could see myself doing something like this chemical engineer i don't know about this just because i didn't do too well in chemistry i was pretty average in chem math was one of those subjects that i grew up liking because i was good at not because i actually liked the subject but i'm go with numbers i love data so i could definitely understand this one architect just goes back to systems and design and things like that can definitely relate to this special effects artist or animator i love tapping into you know that creative side as well i grew up playing guitar drums love music i used to produce so i can definitely see the creative side of this and yeah man as you're scrolling down you can just see like the list of careers that can actually fall within your scope and align with your personality right this is absolutely crazy gives you a bunch of of careers and once you actually click on these jobs you can actually go to a page where it's gonna list out what these responsibilities are for that role and also take you to a job board where you can start applying for those jobs. Listen, and I do wanna talk about one point over here. Sash, you're in sales. You've been in sales your, your, your whole career. I don't see sales over there as, as an option. I said this before, I would classify myself as an ambivert leaning towards the side of introvert, right? And I've spent my time in my career in sales since I've graduated college. And the reason why I did that is because, like I said, I love learning about people. I love listening. I love asking questions. These are traits of an introvert that are super useful in the world of sales, 
right? And as a result, I've enjoyed it. I've done well in it. And I want to continue to do well in sales. So I want you to take these personality tests with a grain of salt. And the approach or mentality that I would take towards something like a personality test would be, I want to maximize my chances towards actually aligning myself with a career that I love, right? Is it going to be for certain? Definitely not. But I think when you're playing the game of probability, there's a good chance that based on these different career options, you can throw yourself into an engineer role or a software developer role and you might like it, right? At the least, at the bare minimum, you're going to be coming out of this knowing at least one more thing about yourself. I guarantee that. And for that and that alone, the value of something like this is definitely worth it. So with that being said, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you for joining me today. If there's one thing that I recommend you doing after this, take a few of these tests, understand yourself a little bit more. The best thing that you can do for yourself in the world today is position yourself correctly, where you understand your strengths, your skills, your weaknesses, and you combine that with what the world needs today. If you've made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you. Click down on the link below to schedule a one-on-one -on -one free coaching call if there's anything that I can do to help you out. And if you found value in this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, my name is Sash. Peace.